Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and today we're going to look at another example of an improper integral. You've seen in previous videos where improper integrals are integrals that accumulate area from some number we did like 1 to infinity. But improper integrals can be sort of doubly improper. And in this case, that's what we see. We're going to think about accumulating area from negative infinity to infinity. So I want us to explore this on Desmos to get some intuitive sense behind it. And then we'll do the, the work, the integration work with paper and pencil to confirm what we are seeing is happening, what we're speculating is happening on Desmos. We're going to begin exploring this doubly improper integral by looking at a graph of the function that we're going to be working with. It's the function x times e to the negative x squared. And the graph looks what you see here on this, on this grid. Now imagine what this integral is doing. The integral is accumulating area underneath the curve from negative infinity to infinity. Now just from an a, um, intuition perspective here, we might make a guess that this integral is going to accumulate this area now this area is considered negative area, not in any weird way, but just negative in that the area is located underneath the x-axis, where this area is considered positive above the x-axis. Due to symmetry, the amount of negative area accumulated here and the amount of positive area accumulated here seems like they would be the same. So let me just make up some numbers. Let's say we accumulate area from negative infinity to zero, and all the area accumulated here is like negative four. I just made that up. And then we accumulate area from zero to infinity, and let's pretend that the area accumulated here is positive four due to the symmetry. Well, the negative four and the positive four then would make a numerical result of this integral of zero. Now let's just confirm that. Desmos won't allow me to use infinity because infinity just means without bound and Desmos won't handle that, but it will handle something specific. Like let's say we went from negative five to five. We can see there already just from negative five to five that this is balancing out to zero. Now to kind of get a sense that Desmos really is doing something here, let's just go from negative one to one. Ah, it's still getting me a zero. Let's go from negative 0 0.25 to 0 0.25. Ah, it's, why does it always give you a zero? Because of symmetry. Because we're accumulating just as much area on the left side, negative area, as we are on the right side, positive area, those uh, are numerically canceling and giving us zero. So even if we went to infinity, even if we went from like negative 100 to 100, we would still see that the uh, accumulated area underneath this curve, negative and positive, is zero. Now let's go back to the board and confirm this more analytically. So it sure does appear as though if we were to accumulate area underneath this curve due to symmetry, that we would get some negative, we would get some positive area, and the overall result would be zero. So what we're going to do to confirm that is break up those two uh, area pieces into two parts. That is, we're going to integrate this thing from negative infinity up to that zero, the middle of that graph, the origin on that graph. And then we'll add to that the integral from zero to infinity, the right side of the graph. In other words, we'll accumulate area from negative infinity up to zero, probably giving us a negative result. And then we'll accumulate area from zero to infinity, probably giving us a positive result, equal amount, but positive, and so the sum of those two will indeed be zero. So let's work through these two uh, pieces of, of integration one at a time. Let's work on the left one first. Let's integrate from negative infinity to zero, x e to the negative x squared dx. Now using the good notation here, to communicate mathematically well, we're going to say this. Take the limit as t approaches negative infinity, and we'll integrate from t to zero. Now that's just a way to say we're at, we have a limiting process at work here, because we're going to accumulate area from negative infinity on, so it really is a limit that we've got happening here. So we'll integrate from t to zero 
x e to the negative x squared. Hey, this thing has beautiful structure, like backwards chain rule kind of structure. So let's work on that integral using the backwards chain rule. So what did you take the derivative of to get e to the negative x squared? Well, e to the negative x squared. No, I'm not done, I'm still constructing, hold on. The derivative of e to the negative x squared is e to the negative x squared. By the chain rule, the derivative of negative x squared would be negative two times x. That's why that x is there, it's from the chain rule. But the negative two coefficient didn't survive, so we must have had a negative one half to counteract it. Fundamental theorem of calculus will integrate from t to zero, and then we'll see what happens as t goes off to infinity. Let's come over here and work on that. So we've got our limit as t goes to infinity. Let's follow the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's substitute a zero in for x. So we'll get negative one half e to the negative zero squared. Minus, let's substitute a t in for x. We'll get negative one half e to the negative t squared. Now, as t goes off to infinity, as t gets larger and larger and larger, you square it even larger, but it's a negative. e to the negative a bazillion is practically just one over e to the bazillion. So as t goes off to infinity, oh, sorry, this is a negative infinity, negative infinity, still the same thing happens. As t goes off to negative infinity, because we're squaring something negatively large, we're getting the positive large, but then applying the negative to it. So this is a one over e to the large, which is really, really small. So as t goes off to negative infinity, this approach is zero. Now over here, Zero squared is zero, negative is zero is zero, e to the zero, e to the zero is one. So this becomes just negative one half. So from negative infinity to zero, we've accumulated a negative one half, one half area below the x-axis. Now, we should expect to see a similar result here, but positive one half. Let's just double check. So good mathematical notation again. Let's take the limit as t goes to infinity. Let's integrate from one, uh, sorry, zero to t, that x e to the negative x squared dx. Now the integration process is the same as we've seen previously. It's just gonna be the limiting process that's gonna be different and the fundamental theorem that's gonna be a little bit, a little bit different. So let's just jump to that result. T is going off to infinity. The integral of x e to the negative x squared, remember, was negative one half e to the negative x squared. We're gonna evaluate that from zero to t. By the fundamental theorem, we'll, we'll first substitute a t in for x, minus we'll substitute a zero in for x. Substituting a t in for x will give us negative one half e to the negative t squared minus substituting a zero in for x will give us a negative one half e to the negative zero squared. Now likewise, as t gets really, really big, you square that really, really big number, it's even bigger, but it's negative, e to the negative big, e to the negative a million is like one over e to the million. So it's really, really small. As t goes to infinity, this term gets really, really, really small. So we're gonna have a zero minus a negative plus e to the zero again is one. Zero plus a half is a half. So just as we suspected, on the one half we get positive a half, on the second half we get negative a half, and so this integral comes out to be negative a half plus positive one half, this whole integral does indeed come out to be zero. So what we would finally conclude is this, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times e to the negative x squared dx is indeed zero. Hey, thanks for joining us on this improper integral journey. Please click on the next video to learn even more about calculus. And also please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our videos. We'll see you soon.